make sure you go to the city council meeting because they can take action just because we recommended tabling does not mean that it necessarily will be tabled at the city council meeting. Thank you very much. Okay, we're moving on to uh, CU 2014-03, uh, Lango Ford. Ms. Barnett. Yes, sir. Give a moment. Okay. CC zoning is the middle category of our commercial zoning districts, and then CC zoning, even minor automotive repair, requires conditional use. Um, in your packet is, of course, some, some pictures. There's some, also some site plans and elevation drawings, um, looking at the different possible ways of, one, renovating the building and how that might affect access and the arrangement of the building versus new. Um, this evening, I distributed a hard copy of the packet and included in the back of that were some new items submitted by the applicant that I received today. And that is a proposed site plan and a building elevation for a new building, if they were to go that scenario. Two different routes. There's pros and cons to each. Um, the existing building is grandfathered in as a building, which means in terms of setback and pervious service, there might be some benefits to that. However, the building is less than ideally shaped for their purposes. Um, which is why they would also then, as an alternative, think about tearing the building down and starting over. However, uh, that becomes brand new development in CC zoning, which triggers compliance with current setbacks, current impervious service, and landscape. So there's pros and cons to either scenario. They are 
uh, basically requesting review of both scenarios simultaneously. Um, however, that is more of a development review process, certainly historic preservation review process. What you are dealing with is a conditional use request. It is whether a minor automotive repair facility is appropriate in this location. And if so, should there be conditions of approval added to that? Staff's opinion is we are finding consistent with the conditional use review criteria. We're recommending approval of that use with these three conditions, which address some of these different possibilities and the scenarios. Um, the first condition, conditional use approval shall be granted for a minor automotive repair and maintenance facility in accordance with the LDR supplemental standards for such use. Building designs for either renovation or new construction shall be as approved by the Historic Preservation Commission. Number two, the existing small parking lot along North Patterson Street shall be removed and the area shall be landscaped as approved by the City Arborist and in compatibility with the City's North Patterson Street State Plans. Any new or future driveways through this area shall be as approved by the City Engineer. I can find the picture. Alright, the upper right picture is the front of the building that faces North Patterson. That is all pavement. Um, it's just one big continuous curb cut. It is contradictory to the city's plans for street, street scheme improvements. Um, backing out onto Patterson through here is not a good idea. I think in your packet you see the comments from the engineering department. They simply will not allow that. Um, so putting bays on this side of the building where vehicles have to back out is just not going to work. Um, so that's why the condition. However, under the new site plan that you see in your packet on the last page, I believe, um, a driveway going into the site um, may work as long as it meets with engineering approval. But again, that's a site development permitting type concern, not so much a use of land. But we note that as a concern. Um, in terms of conditional use approval, we would simply like the front of this property um, upgraded um, to match some of the streetscape plans and other developed patterns in the area. Number three, conditional use approval shall expire after two years if the building permits for this use, which were to be renovation or new construction, have been requested by that date. And that's our standard two-year time limit for conditional uses. The applicants are here for this one. I do see them. Um, and they'll be able to answer some questions that you have, and otherwise I will try to answer questions you may have for me. Isn't there a body shelf right across the lot? There you? certainly is. Okay. You see the commercial pattern all the way around. Some yeah. of these are more intensive commercial <coughs> uses than what is being proposed, which simply adds more credence to our recommendation for approval. Did I understand you say that the uh, Historical Preservation Commission rejected the idea. For now, they have rejected the demolition and uh, new construction of a new building that was proposed to them a few weeks ago. Okay, so it wasn't necessarily the destruction of this building, it was the whole package they turned out. Well, no, 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 no. They approved the renovations to the other buildings as, as they had proposed. And none of that is under consideration by the planning. The out parcel building, okay, which is this building, mm -hmm. um, there was a proposal to either renovate or demolish and build new. Okay, the proposal to demolish and build new, based on what they were showing as the proposal of the new building, that has been rejected. Okay, uh, I was just curious if that was just I mean, based on the design of the new building, what the applicant may do is come back with a different design. Purpose. I was just curious if that was considered a historical building and therefore couldn't be torn down. Uh, it's what we would call a non-contributing building. Um, it, the difference is, is renovating an existing building it has some different impact on the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. Building brand new, it's a little broader scope uh, of review. Yeah. Understood that part of it. Okay. One okay. of the challenges, and you notice in the pictures, it's just a very mixed building pattern around here. And it's quite frankly challenging to come up with something that truly fits in with that. That's more than enough. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none. Anyone in the audience like to speak in favor? 
of this request. In favor, state your name and address, please. My name is Steve Everett. I am the uh, managing partner of Langdale Ford, and I'm here to speak in favor of your request. Um, as you know, Langdale Ford has been around uh, in this location over 50 years. Uh, we are currently in a major renovation of our main building. Uh, we're about halfway through, and uh, we are next moving into a renovation of our super center. Uh, or our used car facility, which used to be the old uh, Army supermarket and the pick and save building. And we are um, going to renovate, remodel that building um, with new fascia that matches the new car facility, which I think you'll find to be very pleasing. And uh, we're spending a good bit of money in doing so. It is my desire, uh, I've been I go forward for over 22 years, and I was told when I first became a partner in this business that we'd need to move it out of the county. Uh, it's been my desire since I've been there to remain downtown. Every time I think about moving, I, I quickly change my mind. I like downtown. I like our location. Even though we're not on uh, the main thoroughfare, it is a good location. I go forward for good to us. I think we've been good for downtown. We had the opportunity to, to purchase this piece of property. Uh, Gosh, eight or ten years ago, I'm sorry, I bought, we did buy the super set of property from, obviously, from the uh, owner who, who uh, leased it to uh, Harvey's and Pickett State, and that was back in 1996. So we've been operating that used car lot since 1996. The owners of that building that were proposing the condition of use permit approached me about buying that piece of property many, many years ago. And we, they were ridiculous in their price, and we've been back and forth. And, and it really laid there for about the last eight or ten years. And they contacted me a couple of years ago, and we started some serious negotiation. And the reason why I wanted to do it was to square off my lot. I would hold, own the entire city block. So I, I, I made a deal, bought the property from it. Uh, then I found out that this was um, a CC zone. I could not tear the building down and display my used cars out there because of the CC zone. So the building, um, I had to keep the building <coughs> and just tear it down and plant grass over there. So uh, I had to figure out a way to use that building. Um, our service department is extremely busy. We have an old change facility over there hooked into our service department. It's very busy. And uh, we decided to pursue a quick lane. A quick lane is a subsidy of Ford. It is a separate franchise and hence the design that you've seen is built around Ford's recommendations. Ford is helping me financially in this thing. And to do it, when they do it, I have to do it their way. I have to do it with the materials and uh, things that, uh, that they have recommended. And one of the problems that we had with the Historic Preservation Committee when we proposed this, the, the, the problem I'm running into is where I meet that, when it, the renovation becomes so cost ineffective, that it makes more sense to knock the building down and build a new building. So hence that's why we went to the Historic Preservation Committee with two ideas because we haven't reached that point yet. We just didn't know. Um, the materials that we had uh, wanted to use for new uh, construction, uh, they, didn't, uh, they didn't agree with. That's why they have not approved the new construction, but they have approved our renovation as proposed. Uh, the light maintenance will, I think, complement our downtown location. Um, we will only do oil changes, alignments, tires. Any major type of repairs will be uh, taken over to our service department. This facility was not branded by Ford. It's called Quick Lane, even though it is a Ford, kind of a Ford-sponsored franchise. It's no, you won't see a Ford oval on there anywhere. We will be able to uh, uh, service to maintain any maker car there. So uh, that's what we're going after. Um, aesthetically, I presented the staff uh, a picture a month or two ago, a couple months ago when we first started this process of a building that did not have the bays on the front. Uh, this is what was put together by the Quick Lane folks. Um, they came down and visited my site. I wanted them to see if this facility would work. They said it would. Um, it could be designed this way. 
Um, so we talked about uh, a concept with no bays on the front. Then there's other quick lane. The operational guys came in and said that won't work. And the reason it won't work is that um, the bays that were proposed to put down the side, all efforts on the side, were wide enough for a bay door, but they weren't wide enough for anything else. Once you pull a vehicle in there, you couldn't open the doors. So the, the uh, person that designed it really wasn't thinking ahead. So those first three bays would be used for uh, oil changes and tire rotations and things like that. you got to be able to open the door. So operationally, we turned that around, put the bays on the front. There's a lot more room to be able to do that. Um, so that's why I think if Matt hadn't seen that first uh, that first concept, you know, maybe they, he really liked that. And, but uh, the Historic Preservation Committee has approved our concept with the three bays on the front. Um, his uh, objection to the parking out front, I have, I took the two vehicles over there today, I put one side by one behind the other. There is plenty of room to pull out and back around without getting on Patterson Street. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that's a problem. Um, and plus, it's only my people that are going to be backing out of those, those stalls, not customers. So we're not allowed parking up in the front there. So um, I, I would recommend you approving this condition of use permit, but I disagree with the staff's recommendation on limiting or taking away my frontage. Don't take away my frontage on Patterson Street, and certainly don't take away my parking lot. And don't make me paint grass up there. What you're really forcing me to do is, by doing that, is use that other parking lot, which is my display <coughs> for my new cars, as entrance into the into those bays, um, and for my customers as well. Even though our front on Patterson Street, if we if we uh, limit it that way, the only way our customer can get into that facility will be through my used car lot, or they have to go all the way around the block because Rogers is a one-way street. So um, we may hit that point um, where it does make more sense to demolish the building and build a new building. I'm not there yet. Really, at this point, I am leaning toward renovation. really like to renovate the building, and I believe that you'll find that what we've done with our new car facility and what we're doing with the super center uh, and by the way there's an auto parts you know we leased that building uh, what was the old pick and save we leased that to auto parts place um, we're going to continue with the fascia all the way down that building to make the whole building uh, look aesthetically very very nice and then this building i think will bring us into a whole great looking campus for downtown Don austin for langdale Ford. And it is one of the, and it'll it'll give me some some good frontage on Patterson Street. It'll relieve the congestion I've got in the service department for quick uh, loop, uh, for quick operations and things like that, and open up for downtown for any make and model concerns. So I would ask, as the owner of the property, that you would, that you uh, approve my request for a conditional use permit without the restriction of uh, not allowing me to put those things. Any questions? Just a couple of clarifications. The, the, new, the site plan that's showing the, the new building, the new construction, is the, the way right now there is customer parking directly off Patterson Street. Uh, is, that's the, Matt, you are reacting, the recommendation is reacting to that, having the parking on Patterson? It's, it's, coming from the city engineering department. Okay. Um, parking, the existing parking lot on Patterson okay. is deemed to be a problem for I a think, variety of things. I think, I guess the clarification that's needed is there's two scenarios for- Correct, I think. And the engineering department's um, uh, critique or criticism is not for the new layout that you presented, but it's on this concept that's showing the renovated building. Their fear is that they're concerned they don't want to have cars backing up onto Patterson Street. But what you are saying is in the existing building to be renovated scheme, that lot along Patterson, that's not for customer parking, that's for uh, the employees pull up, get parked in and out through the base, but they are servicing. 
on the front of those three things. There is going to be an office right in front of, as you can show the uh, that uh, last uh, concept of the building. It's on the lower picture, on the right hand side, we'd see the uh, quick line. Mm -hmm. uh, customers could, in fact, park over there. They could have access either off of Rogers Street or Baxter Street. There. But to the three, we want to block those three lanes and not make, make sure nobody blocks the bay doors uh, so that we can uh, uh, back in and uh, back out of those, those bays. And in your packet, there's comments from the engineering department. Yeah, I where the engineer is saying they yeah. will not allow that. Jim, yes. I just want to make sure I got this clear. The customers are not going to be allowed to back their cars out. So there's no way the customer can back out on Patterson. If somebody were to back out, it would have to be one of your employees that went a whole lot further than what he was supposed to go. Yeah, generally what we do in a scenario like this, um, and what we do in our service department now, once we prepare a car, once our car is repaired, we pull it around for a customer, face it out, and give them the car. So only your employees that would be backing them in. That's correct. That's correct. And there is room for two vehicles. Uh, uh, I put my I pulled my super crew truck and another truck back behind there and was not in the back of the street. I still have some room. Then to you, Matt, is that what the city engineering is objecting to? Is is that backing out these bridges that, that would end up on Patterson Street? Right. Backing out onto the street, there's a streetscape design and there's also proximity to that intersection. Right. I mean it's not a good idea to back out on a big street like that. And even pulling out forwards with that intersection is not, you know, I, you know, the house, they can move it over in a parking lot, and then the customer picks it up. I guess I don't know where they would leave from there. Well, they got to pull that out of back of the street. I mean, that's so just like pulling off the street if you're pulling forward. I mean, you're doing that. And that intersection is a one way intersection. It's, it's not bad out through there every day. If, um, if they're concerned about backing out onto the street, is there any way you could put a small and have just like a drive versus backing out of those bay areas? And I, I'm thinking out loud here. There is a drive that connects. A little buffer or something right there, right there, right there where it prohibits you from backing onto the street. And it, would that satisfy all the requirements? One possibility is to have exiting that parking area onto Rogers Avenue. Mean. So all the traffic is moving forward on a Roger turning right, coming to the regular intersection. Okay. Uh, might, if there's room for maneuvering, that might be something that could be proposed. Okay. We could mark the. I'm sorry. Go ahead and ask your question. My my question was, when the engineers entertained this, was it for customers or was it for employees? It was not stipulated one or another. Just that cars, regardless of the drive. Oh, the the back reason. Back. The reason I'm saying it is we're saying customer to me, it would mean one thing, but for employees only, it would change the whole, as I said, it would change the whole ball game. Because he would have trained employees doing that, then they would know what they were up against. And I wonder if that would make a difference if we tag this thing. Uh, Employees only uh, would be moving those cars out of the bay. Would you live with that, sir? Yeah, I, I, we could, I, I think what I would do, even if you hadn't asked me, would put no parking signs up for all those bays so customers couldn't pull up there. Mm -hmm. Although that doesn't always work, but uh, mm -hmm. I, w I would certainly encourage it. I could also um, strike the lot in such a fashion to steer the traffic onto Rogers Street as they exit my business. I wouldn't have a problem with that. The problem I have is taking those three bays away from me. I think it's very, very important. This is Jim. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Were you saying that, that you think you need to have in place a curb on the center foot? I, I was just throwing that out there for possibility. <coughs> it would preclude you from actually backing out. You would hit a curb right out at a certain point. Kind of curb stuff? On the curb stop? Really? Yeah, curb stop. And that, that was just a thought to keep you from going out. Even if you had that. And that's up to engineering. We, we, can't, we can't say what engineers going to do. But uh, that's up to them. But, 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 but also, it, there, there, there is surely like an egress from your parking lot that's, that's 
Mm -hmm. And so if you're okay with that. I am. And so as what Mr. Mark just said, uh, also too, maybe have a way to get out right directly to Roger Street if you're okay with that. I am okay with that. Okay. Yeah. To me, that as far as the land use component of the application, which is the condition use aspect, doesn't seem to be an issue. And the, the, the issue of the parking lot and the technicality that needs to be addressed very specifically with the engineering department to ensure that whatever the solution you come up with is going to be in agreement with whatever the city's criteria. So I don't feel like we need to discuss the Specifics of how the parking maneuvering ought to be. But it is in here as a condition. It is as a condition. So mm -hmm. we, we, we know, so do you want to strike that and then make the motion? Or make the motion with that in there or out? Well, I would directly, I would probably rephrase that to, I would rephrase it so the parking would be um, um, addressed specifically with in accordance with the engineering department and the city's uh, regulations. It's almost more of that way now. It says we remove the existing yeah. parking lot and anything that goes back in its place must be the engineering and the city arbor's approval. Uh, so I would just simply strike out shall be removed and instead just say shall be landscape as approved, etc. So just strike out that portion of the... Well, would that... I hate to interrupt, but uh, if, if I have three bays on the front landscaping there, I still don't have access to it, is that correct? That's not going to work. Depending on how much landscaping it is out there. Well, it says well, if you put a driveway in from Patterson, the city engineer has to approve it. And obviously you're looking at the plan thinking, all right, maybe a drive from the parking lot of the super center coming in one way and then exiting out Rogers. Well, that's what I just asked us. That's what's in place here. It is. It's to help us move around to the back of the, of the building there. But um, it really limits the use of that piece of property. I mean, you're just assuming because I own that piece of property next to it that I can use that for entrance and exit. If I was using this parcel on its own, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't do that. But um, I, I think there's... If I remove the parking lot, I have to go back with the city um, landscaping type things. That, you know, there's there's still some putting three beds on the front. I can't get to it. That really restricts my business and, and will really make me think about doing this project at all. I mean, I, I've got a business building. I really want to make a nice building out of this, but I, I need to make it work. I need to make it on a business end. I need to make it, make, make it for business. Well, can we just approve the CPU and then leave the engineering be settled later? Is that appropriate? Well, the engineer is going to settle it anyway. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what we do, the engineer is trying to make this decision. Well, I, I can't engineer it from here. I, yeah. I, I, can, I can promise so I think, you that. Uh, I would, wouldn't want what I would engineer. We're just, just trying to make recommendations possible yeah. to put on there as conditions that they may look at. But the engineering department is going to make the final determination, irregardless of what we say. So uh, we're here to approve a conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. so, any other questions for the speaker? We'll move forward. Thank you, Rob. Right, Thank you, sir. Anyone else would like to speak in favor, real quick, of this? Okay, here none. Anyone like to speak in opposition to it? Anyone in opposition? Okay, it's back to the commission for discussion. I'll make a motion. Okay. Mr. Wallace, go ahead. Um, I, I, I agree with the, uh, the Spencer Everett's comments. You know, whatever happens with this piece of property, it has to be functional for business. Um, and he sounds like he's uh, willing, in his spirit, is willing to, to work with the city and the engineers to, to try to come to some reasonably functional, aesthetically pleasing, for all the parties involved uh, <coughs> situation. So based on that, I'd like to focus mostly on the, the, the land use, which of course, uh, it has been found to be consistent with a comprehensive plan. 
uh, I think it's a good use of the property. This property has been vacant for a long time, obviously, based again on Mr. Everett's comments. Langdale Ford is looking at upgrading not only uh, this piece of property, which would be a huge improvement for that particular corner. Anything that they do with it, I think, could be an improvement. Uh, but also the uh, the super center and and the dealership, and uh, I can imagine that whatever it is they're doing uh, is going to be uh, high quality, nice looking. Uh, you know, typically when businesses go into a situation where they're going to invest in the business to to upgrade it and give it a new look, they're going to do something that is very high quality and aesthetically pleasing. So here again, uh, thinking that that's the spirit of what's going on here, I'd like to make a motion that we approve this uh, request for the uh, uh, minor automotive repair and maintenance facility that's been uh, proposed. What about conditions? Uh, rather than have the conditions, I, the only condition that I'd like to see is that uh, Lango Ford agree to work with the Historical Society, the Engineering Department, and the Arborist toward a mutually agreeable and functional end. All right. All right, we got a motion right here, second on that one. Yeah, I'll second that. Mr. McClendon, second it. Do we have any discussion on the motion? So, what is the motion to approve the, the conditional use, but there will be no conditions? Well, just that, uh, that the uh, applicant agreed mm -hmm. to work with the, the engineering department, the arborist, uh, City Arborist and the Historical Society to get their input and all work together to uh, come up with a functional, you know, the property has to be functional. I mean, if you're going to go into business somewhere, it really has to be functional, and it needs to be functional on its own merit. Uh, Mr. Everett alluded to the fact that just because he owns a piece of property next door, he shouldn't be tied to having to use another parcel to make this parcel functional. And, and, and as a business person, I have to agree with it. You know, it has to stand on its own merit, right? So. Condition uh, number three ought to be kept in there. Excuse me, please. Oh, yeah, the 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 yeah. Have with, uh, oh, if, if after two years there have been no building permits or anything issued, then it's uh, uh, well and void. Actually, all we need to do is strike condition two and leave one and three in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's. <laughs> It's his motion. He kept changing his motion. Mr. Wiles, are we moving forward? Uh, that'd be okay with me. Yeah. Strike in number Strike two, number keeping two. one, one and three. Essentially, that's I mean, hopefully everybody understands. Everybody's gonna be reasonable. Be okay. Off the table. Motion for approval with uh, conditions one and three, omitting two. Do I have a second on that one? We'll still have a second. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Mr. Chairman, before we go, are we replacing number two with the language that you had said, or are we just striking it all together? <coughs> we can just, I'll find a strike. That's, that's, that's going to happen anyway, right. basically. Well, you're not going to confirm it. So that's going to be Okay. I think I agree. I think it's going to have to all together. Right. Motion a second. Conditions one and three. Any other discussion? All in favor? You may. Okay. okay. Moving around.